This is Hit Rackets Drive 130. It's the second Hit Rackets um, that I have reviewed. The first one behind me is called the Drop 120, and this is the Drive 130. Now, Hit Rackets are based in Madrid in Spain, and they are currently mostly selling within Spain, but they are definitely interested in spreading through Europe. So if you're interested, you'll be able to buy directly from them, and the link is in the text description. Let me give you a brief overview of the range. They have three rackets in the range in two weights, um, and there's no particular order. You have the Drop 120, which is the standard throated racket, open throat. You have the Drive, which is a teardrop shape, and in case you didn't know, that's because the shape of the head with the strings is like a teardrop. And then there is the touch, which is essentially like this, but with a throat piece across here. So a kind of a combination between the two. They're available in 120 weights and 130 weights. That's the weight of the frame, not with the strings, the grommets, and the grip. All of the rackets have a double color edition. So essentially what you can see here is one side you've got this bronze, one side you've got the blue, and the one behind me you can see the green and then there's a burnt orange, and the touch has another colorway. The drive is described uh, as a racket for people who want power. And the 120 is especially useful for people who like to swing quickly or have a fast swing. And the 130, this one, is those looking for that extra little bit of power, especially hitting the ball to the back. This is supposed to be 130, but remember, as I've already said, that's just the weight of the frame. Some people find that useful. Personally, I don't, because I'm never going to use the frame. The weight, as is supplied by the manufacturer, is 155. Uh, and that gives a balance point of this point here, which I'll talk about in a moment. Once you put a grip on, it becomes 166. And a grip is approximately dependent on how long you put it, about 11 or 12 grams. So that's always gonna be the case. Now you may have noticed these two lines and you might notice them in the background as well. They are not part of the racket. I'll give you a close up here. Those are pieces of tape that I put on. The first one, the top one, is the point where it would balance without a grip supplied by the manufacturer. So as it comes by the manufacturer, that's where it would balance. Once you put your grip on, it balances here. Now, of course, that's not exactly because my finger's a little bit fat. So what happens is when you put grips on, the balance point gets lower and lower. The weight increases, but in some cases that can actually make the racket feel lighter because more of the weight is in the handle. You can have a light racket which is head heavy, that will feel heavier than a heavier racket, not a heavy racket, a heavier racket with more weight towards the grip. Now, I didn't notice any particular difference in the balance once you're holding it. The difference between here and here, it felt the same. It's even in, it's even in things out. The string supplied is the standard string in all of the rackets. It seems quite good. I felt that it was a little bit too tight for me at the beginning, but that's a personal preference rather than saying it was actually too tight. So what did I actually think of the racket? Well, I tested it almost immediately after finishing testing this one, and uh, the first thing I noticed was that there was significantly more power. Now I'll be, if you're interested, later in the video is my methodology for testing these rackets. Um, but very briefly, I hit the ball to, for side to side for a lot, maybe 500, 1000 shots. And I do that because I like the strings to relax a little bit because that's how they're going to play. The first few shots when you hit the ball, that's never how it's going to be. The strings need to relax. And I also feel that I don't want to be playing lots of different shots. I just want to be hitting the ball just to get a feel for it. So the first thing I noticed was that the racket was significantly more powerful than the one behind, the Drop 120. Now, that's not to say that that racket is not powerful, but this one was significantly more. I noticed now, when I do my side to sides, I put a little piece of plastic down, which you'll see in a second, uh, and I use that as a target. Many, many times when I'm hitting with this one or other rackets, I hit sh two shots consecutively. I do that quite a lot. With this one, I managed to do three shots consecutively a couple of times. So there is definitely control in this racket. However, 
If I were able to have a heat map of where the balls hit, I think that on average, the drop would give me a more consistent area, whereas this one was a little more inconsistent. That could be because I never really managed to get the right swing or hitting style to get the most from this racket. This racket is used by a Spanish professional called Edmund Lopez, and he's one of the best players in Spain at the moment, and he's clearly a hundred times more uh, accurate than I am with the ball. So there's no doubt that this racket has accuracy. I just didn't feel that I could get the best out of it. Second thing to notice that I, or I noticed when I was hitting the ball was that um, my hand became a little bit cramped. Now, I don't know whether it's to do with this new style of frame production, and it's not just this racket, it's on a lot of rackets. So where I'm holding the racket, it's not normally the, the point where I curve down. I'm not gonna take this one off the wall, but the point where the grip is, is much thinner. And I noticed that my hand was becoming um, cramped. Well, not my hand, but uh, my forearm muscles and a little bit in my hand. Now, I don't really know whether it was this racket or if it's this style of racket. Um, we'll have to see how that goes. But that was one thing that I particularly noticed. And the last thing I noticed before I give you my summary, as it were, was that this racket responds incredibly well to when you hit the ball flat. I like to hit slice. That racket gives you that extra little punch, that extra little kick when you slice the ball really nicely. You can hit flat and you can hit slice with this and you'll see when I'm killing the ball, I'm hitting slice. But I always felt that when I did hit it flatter, it gave me a better response. So in summary, this racket will give you power. This racket will give you control if you can get that control out of it. If you are accustomed to using teardrop shaped rackets, throatless rackets, and you like power, which they generally give you, then this racket could be for you. If you're the type of player who likes to hit the ball flat, even when it's high, even when it's low, at the front, when you kill the ball, then this is definitely the racket for you. If you are the type of player who likes to hit a lot of slice, maybe not, because this racket didn't respond very well. So that's the summary. If you're interested in more about the mythology and other th methodology, methodology, oh, I can't say it, mythology, methodology, oh, we're gonna leave that in because that's gonna be funny. If you're interested in the methodology of my testing and some of the finer details of the racket, stay tuned. So let's have a look at the racket in closer detail. Well, you'll be able to see that like many of the rackets are produced nowadays, the inner area of the strings uh, is concave. This gives the string more area. Now we're talking minuscule amounts, but it's something that's done and it's done a lot. You've got the interesting colorway. I actually do like it. In general, the graphics on the racket are very, very simple and that's by design uh, they wanted it that way. So you've just got the name of the racket on the side with the weight, you've got the brand on the top, and then you've got just got a couple of logos down the side. So the cool thing about this is the two colorways. The string supplied is one that was supplied by both of them. It's a very basic standard string. It's certainly not the best string I've ever played with, but it's certainly not the worst string that I've ever played with either. So it's a good, it's good enough for your first string that you get in the racket. As I mentioned earlier on though, I do think it's strung a little bit tighter than I would like. And if I were to continue with this racket, once the string broke, because I can't afford to just restring it, uh, just because I want a change of tension, I definitely would get a slightly lower tension. Now that might make the racket worse, it might make the racket better. I don't know, I'd have to experiment with this. Uh, I suspect it would make it more comfortable for me, but it might not be the thing that everybody else wants. So my methodology, wow, I can't say that today. My methodology for testing rackets is side to side for probably 40 minutes, 30 minutes at least, just getting the feel for the racket. And then, like pretty much everybody else, I hit the ball up and down the wall. I see how it responds to hitting the ball against the uh, edge of the racket. And that's really important. The edge of the racket is where you're going to be hitting the ball a fair amount. The better you get, the more you do it. This responded quite well, but as I've already said, I felt it was a little inconsistent. Uh, 
it is very forgiving in the rest of the racket, more so than this, but less so at the top. And I don't think that that's particularly unusual because when you consider the shape, the sweet spot, the area where the ball is uh, hit beautifully when it responds, uh, when you hit it in the sweet spot, it moves the best. Okay, I'm tied, my tongue is tied today, so I'm sorry. Uh, the sweet spot is a little bit lower. Okay, and that's because the strings are lower. I mean, the strings on the other racket finish about here. So if you're going to have longer strings, it's going to move down. But I feel that it almost compromises the area at the top, which is a little bit of a shame. The next thing I do is I play lots of kills. I play lots of volleys. Uh, I, I do everything that you would normally do in a game. But more importantly, what I then do is I purposefully hit off center. So I try to hit the ball here. Now I've already done that because when I'm hitting the ball down the wall, I'm trying to get it up to this area at the top. But I purposefully hit the ball down here and I purposefully hit the ball here. And that gives me a chance to see how it responds for players who can't always get the ball in the sweet spot. Or sometimes even good players can't always get it in the sweet spot because it's a reaction. Then I practice with my left hand. I hit the ball with my left hand. Now I do that because I really need to feel how it responds to a forearm that's maybe not as strong as my other, well, it's definitely not as strong. So I do that because again, I feel that that recreates what it's like for club players to do it. And then the next thing I do is I try to get very close to the wall and I try to play very fast reaction volleys because I like to feel how it works. And in this case, uh, it worked quite well. It's quite nicely balanced. It's maybe balanced a little bit towards the head, um, and I prefer towards the handle, but it felt easy to maneuver, and that can be really important if you are a volleyer. Another test that I do, which might seem silly, you might have seen me doing it already in the introduction, is I like to spin the racket. And I like to spin the racket because somehow I get a feel of its balance and weight in a different way than when I'm holding it. I have to do that with both um, the grip on and the grip off. And when I say grip off, I mean not supplied by the manufacturer because that's also an indication. And this one responds really well. And of course it's to do with its balance point and some rackets are difficult to spin. But what I'm trying to say is that this feels good in the hand. It feels comfortable. My problem with it was when I was hitting the ball, I didn't get the best out of it, but I know it's in there. The difference between the 130 and the 120, well, as the you know headboard says, the head card says, the 120 is probably better for those looking to uh, have a fast swing because there's less um, weight behind it. Although some people think that the head heavy racket does actually have a faster head speed, but maybe it's harder to get the racket moving. Um, I would be quite happy to stick with the 130 rather than the 120. I'm not a huge fan of going as low as possible in terms of weight. It's all about finding the right balance for me. So time for another summary if you've come this far. This racket has power. This racket has control. I never managed to get the most out of this racket, but if you're comfortable with teardrop shapes and you play with one already and you're looking for something new, then this definitely could be the racket especially if you like to hit the ball flat. That's it really. I mean, I've, I've enjoyed hitting with both of them and I hope in the near future to get a chance to play with the touch, which is the one with the, the throated area. Uh, so um, check out their website. Uh, they've got more than just rackets, uh, hit rackets. They've got more than just rackets. They've got a ball machine, they've got um, strings. They've got just like all manufacturers they have. And don't think that they're because they're based in Spain they won't send to you within Europe and probably worldwide because they will. Go check them out. If you think the content of my videos is useful, please consider subscribing to my channel and turn on notifications. This is a playlist of the technical aspects of squash, which probably interests you if you've watched this video. This is a video that YouTube thinks is a really good fit for you. Thanks for watching, and remember, do something every single day to improve your squash. See ya.